Hello, my lovely elves. How are we doing today? Hey guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today, you guys, as you can see by the title and of course my lovely appearance, we are going to be doing holiday vegan recipes. I am so excited. I think I'm extra excited because I feel like these are pretty unique and slightly different. I try to put like a festive look in every single one of these and I think they turned out really well and of course they are all so delicious. If you try any of these recipes, guys, take a nice little photo, okay? And post on Instagram and tag me at Cheap Lazy Vegan, and I will maybe repost it on my community Instagram page, which is at Cheap Lazy Gang. I just love seeing your creations of you making any of the recipes I made. Just love it, warms my heart, warms my cold soul. Today I have four recipes to show you. Yes, four, my friends, I know. I am amazing, I am awesome. Please validate my existence in the comments, thank you. As always guys, the written recipes will be provided in a blog post that's linked down below, so check that out if you wanna make any of these. They're all really easy and really simple, yet so delicious, and I think they will impress whoever you're trying to impress which is probably nobody because we're all just staying away from people. But anyway, and also guys, if you enjoy any of these recipes, you might enjoy my recipes eBooks, which are of course available with the link down below. I have my Cheap Lazy Vegan Recipes eBook, which is all about super delicious and yummy and very simple beginner-friendly vegan recipes. And then we also have my Everyday Asian Recipes eBook, which is my newer recipes eBook. It's all about Asian, Asian-inspired, Asian fusion, vegan recipes. So check out the link down below if you guys are interested in my eBooks. Anyway guys, let's get started with my holiday vegan recipes. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna make is a Korean vegetable pancake with a Christmassy twist. Don't these look absolutely beautiful, if I may say so myself? First thing you're gonna need to prepare are two and a half cups of sliced vegetables. I'm going to be using a mixture of green bell pepper, red bell pepper, and green onion. You just have to make sure that it all adds up to two and a half cups. Just make sure you slice everything very thinly, as thinly as you possibly can. And guys, you can feel free, of course, to use other vegetables. Sliced onions would be fantastic in this. And there's other types of vegetables you could add as well. But why do you think I chose green bell pepper, red bell pepper, and green onion, guys? Why do you think? Well, let me just tell you. It is because these are the Christmassy colors, of course. So I wanted to make it look nice and festive, and that's why I chose these colors. But honestly, you can choose whatever veggies you wanna add into your pancakes. But if you wanna be Christmassy like me, then you can be Christmassy like me, okay? So guys, just make sure that you cut it up and you measure it out to two and a half cups, and then you can add your vegetables into a large mixing bowl or a medium-sized mixing bowl, whatever mixing bowl you have, yeah. Oh, and this is how I slice my green onions. First, I slice them into maybe like two inch slices, and then I go vertical, and then I just kind of chop it into even thinner slices. That's something my mama taught me, mm-hmm. All right, so once you have those vegetables chopped and all ready to go in the mixing bowl, I'm also going to be chopping up some red chilies and green chilies. And I'm doing this mainly for decoration, but also, of course, these add a nice kick if you like something spicy. Now, if you don't like anything spicy, if you don't like spice, then don't add these, of course. And instead, maybe you can leave a few pieces of bell pepper to add a decoration. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. All right, veggies are chopped, my friends. Now we can prepare the batter. Now to make the batter, we're gonna take a blender and we're gonna add in three quarter cup plus two tablespoons of all purpose flour, 100 grams of spinach, I'm using baby spinach here, half a teaspoon of salt and one cup of water. And we're gonna blend this up, my friends. Now guys, the reason I'm using a blender is because we added in the spinach and the reason I added in the spinach is because I wanted to create this beautiful green batter. Now, if you don't have a blender or if you don't wanna use a blender and you just don't care about this beautiful green color, <laughs> then you can just mix the batter separately 
just without using a blender guys you can just add in three quarter cup of flour three quarter cup of water and half a teaspoon of salt that's all you need you can just mix that separately without using a blender but if you want to add in that spinach and if you want that beautiful green color which i highly recommend use a blender it's super quick and easy and then basically you want to add in that batter into the vegetables and mix it very well and now we're ready to cook the pancakes. Lovely. So I'm taking a non-stick pan and adding in one tablespoon of oil. Now the heat is on a medium to medium high heat. I would start with medium just in case. Okay. Anyways, I'm using this lovely scooper thing <laughs> and scooping out the batter. This is probably about like maybe half a cup each pancake, but you can also make one giant pancake. Okay, or maybe it would make about two big pancakes. Koreans, we like to make big pancakes. Okay, that's what we like to do. But I decided to make smaller ones because, I don't know, it's COVID. You don't want to share the food. Okay, maybe I don't need to talk about the food. But anyway, and as you can see here, I'm also adding in the lovely decorations. The green and blue. The green and blue? Oh my god. The green and red uh, peppers. Once again, if you want to just add in bell pepper you can do that as well because the bell pepper that's in the batter it kind of gets lost a little bit in the batter so if you want that green and red i almost said green and blue again oh lord if you want that green and blue damn it <laughs> guys guys my brain my brain is not working anyway if you want that green and red decoration, you can again add in slices of bell pepper if you can't handle the uh, chili spice. So let's repeat that one more time, okay? So this would make about seven to eight mini pancakes or two kind of you know larger pancakes, okay? So you wanna cook it on one side for about three to four minutes on medium heat, and then you wanna flip and cook for another like two minutes or so, and it should come out nicely. Now don't be shy with the oil. You do need quite a bit of oil, unfortunately, okay? And it tastes really good, <laughs> cause it's nice and crispy. Oh, and I usually just use one tablespoon of oil for each time I'm cooking the pancakes. So that's, that's what I did, okay? And that is how easy it is to make a beautiful Christmassy Korean yatejeon. So vegetable pancake in Korean, it is yatejeon. There you go, guys. There is a Korean lesson you did not ask for. And that is how beautiful it is. Now you can plate it however way you want. And now, of course, I'm going to show you guys how to make two different kinds of sauces to go with this. Now the first sauce is a little bit spicy. Once again, I'm using gochujang, which is Korean red pepper paste. This you can find in your local Korean or Asian supermarket. And into a small mixing bowl, I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of gochujang, three tablespoons of white vinegar, and one tablespoon of maple syrup or some other sweetener. And I would recommend adding in the gochujang and maple syrup first, mixing that first, and then adding in the vinegar. It'll make the mixing process a little bit easier. I had to learn it the hard way, even though I should know this already, but yeah. And there's your sauce, or if you want to be a little bit fancy, we're going to add in some toasted sesame seeds. This part is optional, but recommended. And of course, if you want to continue this lovely Christmassy theme, you can also add in some slices of green onion into that lovely red sauce. Now guys, if you can't handle the spice, you know I'm here for you. This one is ridiculously easy. You're just gonna need one tablespoon of white vinegar and one tablespoon of soy sauce. And then of course, once again, optionally, you can add in some green onion and also some toasted sesame seeds. And that is how you make these beautiful, delicious, Christmassy Korean vegetable pancakes with the two different kinds of sauces. Feel free to make both sauces if you want, of course. And I hope you guys enjoy these. I really hope you try these. If you do try them, take a picture and show me on Instagram. Tag me at CheapLazyVeganGuys. Next, we are making a super easy lasagna, but I wanted to make it a red and green lasagna. Now, it's not as red and green as I would like, but you know, it still looks pretty good. <laughs> you know what? I tried, okay? I tried. 
let's get started guys so i'm using spinach lasagna noodles because i wanted that green color now it's not as green as i want but you know it'll do the trick if you can find those red ones Ooh, I think that would look fantastic. Anyways, these guys are not oven ready lasagna noodles, but I don't believe in the concept of cooking lasagna noodles before throwing them in the oven. And here's a little hack for you. Do not believe that you need to boil the noodles before you start making your lasagna. That is a lie, my friends. All you gotta do, guys, is count first how many noodles you'll need. I do this by basically placing them in the pan that I'm going to use and however many layers I wanna use. And then I just pour some warm water into the pan thing and then just let it soak while we do everything else. And this did the trick. And honestly, you probably don't even need to do this, but just in case, I didn't want my lasagna to come out dry so I decided to soak it while I was doing everything else and that did the trick beautifully now that we have the lasagna noodles soaking we can make our beautiful tofu ricotta now I've made this a million times but this time I'm making it slightly differently because I want to make it a green tofu ricotta so into a food processor or a blender, we're gonna add in one block of firm or extra firm tofu, four tablespoons of lemon juice, a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of basil. Now that pretty much filled up my food processor, so I wanted to blend this out first before adding in my next ingredient, which is spinach. And of course, the spinach is what's gonna make this a green tofu ricotta. So I ended up adding in a little bit of baby spinach at a time. So the first time I added in 50 grams and then I blended it up and then I added in a little bit more until I got to 150 grams of baby spinach to get the desired green color. And that is how I got this beautiful green tofu ricotta. Feel free to add in more spinach if you want it to be a little bit more vibrant, totally up to you. Oh, and before I forget, this might be a great time to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And guys, if you haven't tried the tofu ricotta, you absolutely have to try it. I've made this a million times. I'm gonna link my original lasagna recipe down below so you can see how to make it without the spinach. It's pretty much the same, just slightly different measurements, but yeah. Anyways, once the uh, tofu ricotta is done, we can pretty much make the lasagna because it's that easy, okay? This is like the easiest lasagna ever. So first I uh, drained the water out of the pan here and now my noodles have softened a little bit, which is what we want. And then into the lasagna pan, I'm going to pour some tomato sauce. I'm just using store-bought tomato sauce, guys. I wanted to keep this really easy and simple. So I'm using this big can of tomato sauce. Now one thing, if there's one thing I learned about making lasagna, always have extra tomato sauce more than you think you need because I always end up needing just a little bit more because you just wanna make it like super saucy, okay? So we wanna start with a layer of tomato sauce on the bottom and then you can start adding in the lasagna noodles. Now, after the layer of noodles, you can of course add your layer of tofu ricotta. And then we're gonna add in another layer of the tomato sauce. Again, I'm being very generous with my sauce, guys, very generous. And then we can put another layer of the lasagna noodles. Now, one thing to make your life a little bit easier is to take a spatula and just spread the tofu ricotta onto each piece before just placing them on as a layer. And I just find that this is a little bit easier to spread the uh, tofu ricotta. And then we're just gonna simply do another layer of the lasagna noodles. And we are going to, of course, spread some more tomato sauce on top. Now guys, feel free if you wanna make a vegan uh, bolognese sauce, if you want to add more vegetables in here, of course, feel free to add other layers. I wanted to keep this really simple. And as you can see here, I'm adding in some more pasta sauce because like I said, you're always gonna run out of sauce, okay? And on top of that tomato sauce, this part is optional, but you can add in about a cup of vegan shredded cheese. Again, totally optional. I've made plenty of vegan lasagnas without adding any vegan cheese, but I had some in my freezer so I thought, hey, why not add some? Okay, so I'm adding in about a cup. And on top of that, I also decided to add in a quarter cup of nutritional yeast just to top it all off. 
And now we can cover this up with aluminum foil and put it in the oven. It should be preheated at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and you're gonna cook it for 30 minutes in the oven covered up. And then you want to remove the aluminum and then cook it for another 10 minutes. And then of course, guys, you can take out the lovely lasagna and do the hardest part, which is letting it cool. <laughs> Let it cool for about, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, so that um, when you cut it up, it still remains pretty firm and put together like so. And what I did was I actually stacked it. So I would like cut it up and then I stacked the pieces as you can see here. So I have one little piece and I'm gonna stack another piece and it just looks a little bit sexier that way. And that's what I did. And that way you can see the beautiful layers coming through. You can see the different colors kind of coming through. Once again, you know, maybe I should have added more spinach into the ricotta. I mean, I still think it looks pretty good and it still gives you kind of that Christmassy vibe. No? Yes? I don't know. Either way, it's super tasty, guys, and it's so easy. Highly recommend. Highly, highly recommend. Oh, and it's like pretty healthy too. Just saying. Just saying. And guys, the next recipe, I cannot wait for you guys to try this. I am just in love, first of all, with the aesthetic. Can we just talk about this? Can we talk about this for a second? Look how beautiful. Look how Christmassy. Oh my God, make this immediately after this video. So guys, we're making some cauliflower wings, Korean style, sweet and spicy. So first we're taking some cauliflower, of course, we're gonna get rid of the leaves and stuff. And then we are going to chop it up into nice bite-sized pieces. So I used about half a head of cauliflower and then I realized that cauliflower comes in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are big, some of them are small and one could be double the size of the other. So I actually weighed this out and I used 400 grams, okay, around 400 grams of cauliflower. So if you have a food scale, weigh it out. If not, I used around half a small head of cauliflower, okay? And once we have those pieces chopped and washed, we can make our lovely batter. But before we make our batter, once again, don't forget to preheat your oven, unless you're using an air fryer. Don't forget to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's make our batter. So into a small bowl, I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon paprika, and then mix that well. Once those dry ingredients are mixed, you can add in half a cup of non-dairy milk. I'm just adding in unsweetened cashew milk, but you can feel free to add in whatever non-dairy milk of your choice, or you could just add in some water as well. So you just wanna mix that nicely until you get a nice smooth batter. And then onto a plate, I'm gonna add in some breadcrumbs. I'm using just panko breadcrumbs. And I started with half a cup, but total I used one cup. And I have the cauliflower pieces in a large mixing bowl and I'm just gonna pour in the liquid batter into the cauliflower and tossing it well so that every piece is nicely coated. And now we can coat. So I'm using one hand to take the cauliflower pieces out and the other hand to coat the pieces with the uh, breadcrumbs. So basically the first coating is going to be the wet batter and then the final coating is going to be the breadcrumbs. And I try to keep one hand uh, with the wet batter and then the other hand with the breadcrumbs, but I always mix it up, that's just me, but yeah. So yeah, once you've coated all of them, you can actually place onto a baking sheet, which I've lined with a reusable uh, silicone liner. And then we're gonna stick this in the preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of 35 to 40 minutes, but halfway through you wanna flip things around, okay? But also if you have an air fryer and you wanna use that, I do recommend using an air fryer as it's quicker and I like the consistency better. I will have the air fryer instructions in the written blog post, so check that out. And while your cauliflower wings are cooking, you can make the delicious sauce. So into a medium sized bowl, we're gonna add in three tablespoons of Korean red pepper paste or gochujang as you saw earlier. And we're also gonna add in two tablespoons of maple syrup or agave nectar or any type of syrup. And lesson learned guys, mix this first. So the gochujang and the syrup, this is a lot easier to mix. So mix that first. And then we're gonna add in one tablespoon of soy sauce, a quarter cup of ketchup, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, and two tablespoons of water. 
And here's me flipping the lovely cauliflower wings halfway through, guys. And next, we can chop up our vegetables. I'm basically using the same ones as I used for the pancakes to create those beautiful colors. So we are just chopping up about two to three stalks of green onion. And I'm going to dice some bell pepper. So we are dicing up half a green bell pepper and a quarter of a red bell pepper. You can also add in more if you'd like or less. Totally up to you. Yeah. <laughs> And these are the lovely finished cauliflower wings that uh, took about 40 minutes or so to cook in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm glad to see that they still work very well in the oven. I haven't made them in the oven for a very long time. I've been using an air fryer uh, anytime I make cauliflower wings, but um, I want to show you guys how to make it in an oven because I know not everyone has an air fryer. But again, if you want an air fryer, highly recommend it, okay? So anyways, we are throwing the uh, cauliflower pieces into a large mixing bowl, and then we're gonna add in that delicious sauce. So we're just tossing it so that every piece is nicely coated, of course. And once you've tossed the sauce nicely and everything is nicely coated, you can add in some or all the vegetables at this stage. I'm gonna add in some of the green bell pepper and toss it first, and then I'm going to plate it. And then I'm going to add the rest of the vegetables on top just to make sure that they all stand out nicely. So we've got the green, we've got the lovely red, we've got the green onion, and I just think the colors are so beautiful. And this part is optional, but recommended once again. You can add in some toasted sesame seeds on top. And uh, there you have it. There is the delicious, the beautiful Korean style, Christmassy cauliflower wings that are sweet and spicy and so delicious. And I'm sure these will be a fantastic hit uh, at your empty dinner table this year. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Is it too soon to make jokes? Oh God. Anyways, uh, that's how you make it. It's delicious. It's so good. I hope you get to share it with your loved ones because, oh my God, it is so good. You guys, seriously, try it try it and finally guys we're actually doing a dessert i know i very rarely do sweet things on my channel but i had to show you guys how to make these delicious chocolate peanut butter cheesecake pops that are super festive and cute all right so into a blender we're going to be adding one and a half cups of cashews that have been soaked so you need to have them softened so either you can soak them overnight in water or you can boil them for about 15 to 20 minutes but yeah they need to be softened guys so we're going to add one and a half cups of softened cashews along with three tablespoons of coconut oil quarter cup of full fat coconut milk so the one in a can we're going to add a quarter cup of lemon juice quarter cup of maple syrup or agave nectar and a quarter cup of peanut butter and a pinch of salt and we're going to blend this until it is nice and smooth it's going to take a little bit of time to blend be patient but you're going to get a really nice smooth consistency and patience will pay off my friends it will pay off once that's done, you can transfer that mixture into a container and seal it and put it in the freezer for about an hour to two hours. So yeah, keep it in the freezer for I would say at least one or two hours and check up on it maybe every 30 minutes to kind of stir things around a little bit. Now you want the consistency to be something like this where it's pretty solid but it's soft enough for you to be able to actually mold them into balls with your hands. Now you can start forming little balls with this mixture, maybe about a tablespoon for each little ball. That's probably a good estimate. So it should look something like this and then you wanna add a little stick. I'm just using coffee stir sticks for this. So you just wanna add the little stick into each ball. And once everything is done, I actually put it back into the freezer for about five to 10 extra minutes just to let it kind of freeze up a little bit more and get a bit colder again before we start doing anything else. And while that's sitting in the freezer again, you can make the lovely chocolate coating. So into a little container, I'm adding in a quarter cup of coconut oil, a third cup of cocoa powder, two tablespoons of maple syrup or agave nectar, and a pinch of salt. And then you wanna put this in the microwave and run it for about 20 seconds until it's nice and melted. If it's not melted, microwave it again for another 10 seconds and in 10 second intervals, but it should melt pretty quickly and it should be something like this. And now all you have to do is take those little pops out of the freezer and you can just dip each one into that lovely chocolate coating. 
and this should solidify pretty quickly but it does get a little bit messy so maybe have a little plate so that it can catch the uh, drippage and before the chocolate solidifies you want to add in whatever decorations you want i decided to go for these kind of festive looking sprinkles which i think are super cute so i'm just kind of putting them on each piece And I actually stuck them in this little vase, which I filled with some coffee beans, which worked out really well for me so that it can kind of just, you know, hold these sticks upright, especially before it's completely solidified. This was a pretty good idea. So if you can do that, do that. Or maybe you can find another kind of amazing way to hold these sticks up. But there you go. There's me taste testing it. <laughs> This was actually one of the recipes that I showcased in a Pop Kitchen collaboration. So I did a video for the Pop Kitchen YouTube channel where I showed three vegan holiday dessert ideas and this was one of them. So if you guys want to see the other two, I'll link that video down below. Anyway guys, that is how you make these delicious, beautiful cheesecake pops. Don't you just want a bite? All right, you guys, so that is it for my 2020 holiday vegan recipes video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did enjoy it, of course, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And guys, I have an entire playlist of holiday recipes for you. If you guys want more ideas, I'll link that playlist down below for you. So check that out. And of course, don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you make any of these delicious recipes. And guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you're staying safe. I hope you are doing well despite the circumstances of this year. And I hope that we are ready for 2021. Who is not ready for 2021? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!